first of all, guys, amazing job on this film. This is phenomenal and much needed, must I say. Um, I was unfamiliar with the Mangrove Nine um, until this, so thank you for that. But talk to me about your characters and how they intersected with this moment in history. For me, uh, it was, <laughs> dude, it's ended up being like 2020 this year. Yeah. A whole load of things that just came together explain that one away. It's like, it, it just did. I mean, it just did. I mean, you know, um, if you imagine Frank's restaurant being like Cheers, right. Cheers, the bar, like you want to go where everybody knows your name. Well, you know, Cheers, that was the community. It was the place where people felt comfortable, where they could go, where they weren't looked at in any kind of way. Because if they go to the restaurant around the corner, well, that's not owned by a black man. That's owned by those people who every time you walk in, you're getting looked at like, can I help you? What are you doing here? So you go to that restaurant and that's it. So that's how everybody knew Frank. That where, where else were you going to go? So, so that's how that happened. He had a place for people to come and feel comfortable. Um, so that's simple. Um, but, but again, it's extraneous. It's the circumstances around surrounding it that, 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 that the activism was there as far as Darkus was concerned and Althea, um, there's my guy who just wanted to run a restaurant. Please let me just run a restaurant and cook. Right. That's all I want to do. Right. But then, you know, he's got this, uh, this other side, the police, who essentially, as far as anyone can fathom, don't like the color of his skin. So, the, you know, as I've said before, you know, that song like, we're the ones who made you. It's like, you made me. Right. I just wanted to cook food and own a restaurant. Yeah. But you made me. You made me. So, so, so check this out now. So, um, so that's what happened. Now, uh, Malachi, let me ask you a question. In in Mangrove, we see the power protest, and as uh, we can also see it can be manipulated and perverted for political gain. Why are protests such an effective tool? That's a great question, because um, I have, <laughs> why is it such an effective tool? When it is an effective tool, when it is, um, yeah. I believe it is effective when their voices are heard, you know, it's like undiluted speech. It's a chance to express yourself without a filter, you know, and to be, and to just, just to be seen and to be heard. Um, but whether that will be of effect is another matter. Um, but I think it's definitely um, a very useful tool when it's, when it's, when it's, <laughs> do, you know what it, do you know what it is? I don't even think it's about necessarily who's speaking sometimes and, and, and who's marching or what they're marching about. But sometimes if, Sadly, sometimes if the world is ready to hear it, you know, sometimes if the rules are ready to bend, um, I think that's just a painful uh, uh, truth, um, which is why I think um, people end up protesting for so long. You know, sure. if, if it was just about what was being said, then you'd protest once and the, ch the change would come, <laughs> you know, but we have to keep going and keep saying and keep speaking um, and, and keep dying <laughs> until actually someone cares enough to listen and do something about it. Yeah, now, I would argue, I would argue if it is an effective, because uh, the, the last, we had, a, we had a riot over here, my friend. The last the time that I can say there was an effective riot, an effective march was something that we called the poll, the poll tax march. It was about the poll tax back in the day. They now call it the council tax, but it was in the nineties, late eighties, maybe nineties, Thatcher. And they turned, they turned the decision around. That's but incredible. Why, but why did they turn the decision around? Because number 10 was getting bashed in. The, the Buckingham Palace, people were marching on things and people, things were getting ripped down. So that, that was effective. But um, they, you, you can't argue with a community of people standing up and screaming the same message. You know, what, what, why is that effective? Because it's powerful, because it feels good. I was at the march on Hollywood this year um, I wasn't going to go down. I didn't even know it was on. Someone said, oh, there's a march. So we're shutting the shop because the march, I live in Hollywood in LA when I'm there. So, uh, and I walked down five and a half minute walk. I walked down from Beachwood there and, um, and, and did the march. So what was effective about that? Well, seeing, you know, black people, oh shit, white people, oh shit, Chinese people, oh shit, like, you know, male, female, you know, but then every now and again, you see a black man stood there with tears in his eyes watching this. 
And it, when I look at him, I'm like, I remember what this is about. Because that guy, older black guy, he's looking at the scene. He was stood on top of a something so he could just see the thing. And he had tears in his eyes. And he was looking at it. And I could see that he was just, he, he felt it. And that was powerful for me. That's well, this really part of that march. Sorry, Mike. Go. Sorry. No, you're good, man. This film was powerful for me. Incredible job. I, I just can't wait for everyone to see it. I want to thank you guys so much for your time. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Sir.